This is the Ford F-150 Lariat Lightning Edition. This is an alternative fuel, fully electric F-150. I'm going to review it and drive it and tell you why I think it's great and also some of the features that I think are absurd. Now, the first thing we need to start with here, which I was shocked, this thing costs $72,284 has the 20 inch wheels here. We have the light bar that goes across the entire front and it has a massive storage space up front, which I'm gonna show you right now. Now to open the front up, you click this button right here. Hey, okay. So for 72 grand, it does come with an automatic lift. That's very nice. This is the largest storage space I've ever seen in the front of a car. It's massive. The other nice thing, is it actually, because of this low clearance here, you can load things in here easily. Think a couple bags of dirt, maybe a pig you just got from the butcher, something like that. We also have this AC power unit here. Look at how nice that is. A lot of really functional features. So here's some standard equipment. Large front trunk area, LED projector with dynamic bending headlamps, power up and down front hood, power up and down tailgate, 10-way power driver seats, 12-inch productivity screen. Personally, I don't know how productive you're gonna be on this thing. 360-degree camera, b &O sound system with eight speakers, lane keeping system, post-collision braking, pre-collision assist with AEB, and a three-year, 36,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty with a five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty. The warranty on these is really bad. Compared to other cars, it's usually four year, 50,000 miles. So this is really low. And then even the powertrain, five year, 60,000 miles is more normal for the powertrain, but the three year, 36 for bumper to bumper is pretty low. But for the electrical vehicle components, that's eight year, 100,000 miles. But I think powertrain is in reference to the battery. That may be for the battery itself in the car, I'm not totally sure. I think Tesla is eight year, 120,000 miles for the Model Y. The full driving range of this specific F-150 is 230 miles. Now in theory, driving around these electric cars, we're gonna save the environment, we're gonna save the world, it's gonna be a greener place, but truly driving a private vehicle is an inefficient thing to do. And that's why today's video sponsor is 10 Ways. This is the 10 Ways CGO 800S. It's an e-bike. I've actually been very excited and hoping an e-bike company would reach out. Finally, the right one did. This thing's incredible. Has these huge shock absorbers up front to help smoothen out the ride. Maybe Tesla could maybe look at something like this to have a nice ride. Has a removable battery that's also lockable. It's very easy to charge at home. And then there's drive mode, so you have five different drive modes ranging from off all the way up to setting five, which is boost. And as you can see me driving around this grass field, you know how hard it is to pedal through grass. This thing makes it effortless. It's incredible. The battery range is also up to 100 kilometers or about 62 miles, which is better than a used Nissan Leaf. It also has a carbon belt drive to help deliver the power and it doesn't make a sound. Additionally, there's a torque sensor. So the second you start to pedal the bike, it kicks in and it's seamless. It's really impressive how this thing gives you effortless power. It makes riding a bike enjoyable and you get further faster. There's also a 10 ways app and the US version has a 350 watt motor. Now there are a few color options for this. I personally got midnight black. There's pebble gray and sky blue. And if you don't like the style of the CGO 800S, they have the CGO 600 Pro and they have the AGO X City Road Series. So they have various editions of their e-bikes which fit different use cases. So if you're looking for an e-bike that you can drive at night with a cool headlight and turn signals in the back, this is the one for you. I'll have it linked down in the description and they have some really good promotions going on their site. 10 Ways, thank you for sponsoring the video. So go on over to 10ways.com and uh, order up. <laughs> now, I was thinking to myself, who's going to buy this car? $72,000. I'm personally, I'm not a truck person. I'm not the right guy to be reviewing this car, but I think maybe that's a good perspective. And I thought, well, if I owned a farm, right? And I'm in the middle of the country, I could have solar panels that power a battery or some type of power wall storage solution. And then I can charge this car and be totally renewable on my own in the middle of nowhere and reduce my cost of energy. The problem with that is the car costs $72,000.
So if you just bought like a hybrid F-150 for 40 grand or something like that, your savings would be more immediate because you wouldn't have to wait all those years of doing the charging and everything on your own to make up for those costs. So I, I don't know, I just think the cost is totally nuts. Now everything has gotten really expensive and Ford apparently, I think last quarter, lost $58,000 per electric vehicle that they sold. So they have a long way to go, but Tesla was just like that in the beginning. They, you have to scale up and everyone likes to dump on them and say, oh, look at them losing all this money. It's like, it's gonna take time, okay? But this thing is massive. When you get up in it, like, I mean, I feel like a little kid up in this thing. I mean, I'm only six feet tall, but geez. Like if you're in an abusive relationship and your wife goes to hit you, she's not gonna be able to reach you from the other side of this. I mean, it's far. Here's a look at the digital dash here. Some nice displays. The frunk is ajar. The frunk's nice. Infotainment system. Here's what I'll say about the F-150. Here's what I like. It didn't try to say, hey, here's a bunch of pots and pans. We're gonna go cooking in the woods like the Rivian did. The Rivian thinks like people are gonna go into the woods and cook and live off of this truck. That's, that's just not going to happen. In theory, it sounds good. It's great for marketing because you show these people they're at Yosemite and they're camping out and they're having a good time. You're not gonna do that, right? The F-150 just said, we're just gonna throw a battery in the F-150 and they did a nice job and they added some nice little features that are unique to electric cars. And I think that was very smart as well. But I just like that this thing says, Battery, F-150, built Ford tough, get them out the door. But overall, the car is, there's things that about it that are cheap, like, like this, for example. This is looks like some type of leatherette. It's just a cheap plastic. I, but again, how much are you gonna be touching this? I don't know, but then you look for $72,000. Oh, man, I, I don't know, that's shocking to me, but maybe truck people are like, yeah, that's no big deal. Uh, my truck was $400,000. The back seat, holy cow. I mean, this is a room. If you go on a cruise, your cruise room has less space than the back seat of this car. I mean, this is incredible. And it's comfortable to the seats. You sink right in. They're very comfortable. Insane amount of space. Look at the width of the center console here. It's its own zip code. I mean, it's just a massive place and the car is also quick. We're gonna drive it here in a minute. This lady's looking at me like I'm insane. I just come into these parking lots and start filming myself, but that's life these days. Yeah, you got that there. You have this window, looks like it uh, automatically opens up. You have some lights in the back there that work. You don't have a massive panoramic roof, but who cares? I love the space of it. I, I see the appeal. Let's, how do we open the back of this? It's funny because I don't know what anything does. Okay, that's automatic there. Automatic. Got the Ford logo there. Hello, hello, hello. Little echo. What do we got here? Got these units. Okay. Some 120s. And we got that big boy. Oh, we got lighting. Stadium lights are on. So yeah, there's just a lot of things that they did that make sense with the F-150. What the hell does this do? Oh, the step down. So we got a little step stool there. So you get right on there and you step up onto the back of the truck. Yeah, there's just a lot of nice things that, you know, Ford knows how to make. Oh, look at that. You get it up to a certain length and it goes right in. I also love the color scheme here of lightning. That looks really cool to me. I'm happy that they did that. It's a clean looking car and it sits up incredibly high. Like you can't believe how high up you're sitting. Let's get this closed up. All right, and we're locked back into place. Yeah, you can't believe how high up you're sitting. It's absolutely insane. All right, so let's take this for a spin. The first thing I noticed, the shifter over here is, uh, feels really like cheap and plasticky. So that's kind of an unpleasant experience, but uh, you will get over it, right? We got other things to worry about. Now, how's the driving experience? This thing, I mean, it feels like I'm commanding a ship. You don't drive a boat, you con it. As Papa Jim once said, the late Papa Jim. If you watch Danny Duncan's channel, you know who I'm talking about. Rest in peace, Papa Jim. But then what you love is the electric driving experience. That's, that's what shocked me. The first time I drove an electric car, I went, oh, this is how it's supposed to be. This is remarkably 
refined. Now, that's from a mass population not really caring about their car perspective. Now, if you want to drive a car that feels good and sounds good, there's GTR, like we're seeing right over there, or a Porsche 911, or the Supra manual transmission, or a BMW M2, or a GR86, or a GR4. There's a billion cars out there that are more exciting to drive for the enthusiast. I'm talking about a comfortable experience for someone who doesn't want to drive a sports car. This delivers on that. It's so incredibly smooth, and it's also quick. Like, at any speed, you can just get on it and boom. I mean, it's legitimately quick. I, I would bet zero to 60 comes in about the mid fives. So it's not shocking, but it's surprising. You're like, whoa, that was, that was different. Infotainment up here. Now I owned a Ford Focus ST and I made 160 videos on this YouTube channel uh, specific to the ST. So I'm a former Ford advocate. I really like the Focus RS. My overall experience with Ford, and I recently talked to an engineer about this who just left Ford, is they're constantly trying to find band-aids as opposed to solutions. For example, the electric motor from over torquing on the F-150, I don't know if this is currently still a problem, but instead of like fixing the source of the problem, whether that's in a software update or some of the coding is off or whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously not an engineer, right? Instead of finding the cause of the problem, they just put a bump stop in so for when it over torques, it doesn't just rip the whole electric motor out of the back of the car. So there are examples like that that I heard specifically from a Ford employee where it's like, that's a shame. And I've had that same experience with my Focus ST when I did work uh, on the motor over the years. You would see from a 15 to a 16, some random things that they would do that just kind of were cheap band-aids to uh, a larger problem. It's very smooth, it's quiet. The infotainment system here, it's not bad. It, it, you know, it's not bad. I personally, I, you know, I, I, when I see companies put these big screens like this, I feel like they looked at Tesla and just said, okay, we're gonna do that, but we're gonna turn it, all right? We're gonna turn our sheet of paper. I think they would have been better off just sticking with what they had before, but that's okay. We, what do we have here, a sketch feature? Oh, it doesn't let me draw what I'm driving. But what if someone's in the passenger seat and they want to draw? All right, we won't argue. The seats are very comfortable. It's very spacious in here. There's an incredible amount of storage, more storage than you would get in a gas-powered F-150 because of you having the entire frunk. It also showed you the uh, load rating for the front. I think it's 400 pounds for the front of the car. So yeah, it's just a really pleasant experience to be driving around in this. I mean, that's a BMW X7. I'm looking down into the cabin of that thing. I mean, it's crazy how high up I am sitting. The other thing that a lot of people want to know about is Ford's Blue Cruise. So we're going to turn that on. Watch the road. Be prepared. Yes, sir. Yes, I will be prepared. Okay. Okay. Blue Cruise engaged. Now, I've heard that Blue Cruise is very good. I have no experience with it. We're just going to do it right now. We're cruising down the road, and Blue Cruise is showing us what to do here. Yep, I got my hands on the wheel. Yep, Henry Ford watching over me. Coming to a stop. The single pedal driving is also very good. So we're coming to a stop here. Boom. The car stops on its own. That's very nice. Now, one complaint I had when I drove the Mustang Mach-E a while ago was when you're coming to a stop, there's like this transition of you going from regenerative braking to the brake and it's like kind of jerky and the genesis gv70 i just drove which i loved it was kind of jerky at low speeds or in parking lots this is very good the engagement that you get and then off the line we'll see everyone later and there's no drama it just puts the power down it's quick it's quiet i i love that so much and look, I mean, the mileage is not impressive, right? On paper, 230 miles. So you're like, oh, that's not that much. But are you taking your truck on road trips? Um, or are you driving it around the farm? Or are you driving it to your office? Or do you once a year use the bed of it to uh, help move your friend's couch from apartment to apartment? Because he got evicted again. That's what you have to ask yourself. And it's like, if you're just driving around, hey, Tesla owner, stay in your lane. Oh, he's texting. Texting and autopiloting. God, that's the one thing. We'll stay off that for now. But yeah, I, I really enjoy this truck. I think you're gonna enjoy it. I think it costs a lot. But again, I'm not a truck person. Now I would spend a lot of money on a car. So you have to make that decision for yourself. I can't bring you a good perspective there as far as its value goes. What I can tell you is it's quick, it's quiet, and has a ton of storage space. And it has enough range to get you around town to do probably what you need to do. It's more than enough. 
So I, I think if you like trucks, you're gonna really like this thing. It sits up so high, has a ton of space in the back. It has this massive infotainment screen, which Sync 4, I had Sync 3 in my focus. Sync 3, it was good, but it was nothing really advanced or anything to write home about or really smooth. Um, it was just good. So then for a couple of the options on here, so there's lane keep assist and that reduces lane keep assist and then this adjusts the follow distance. So that's really far and then we'll get closer as we hit that button. So that's kind of what those features do. What's this do? Lane keep off, lane keep on. Yeah, so I mean, it's all the standard buttons. I mean, nothing really new there. I'll also say this about the F-150 and electric cars in general, is you can't force it down everyone's throat. The government can't be saying, we need go all electric by 2035. I think that's highly, highly unrealistic. Electric car companies need to build electric cars that we as consumers want to buy over a gas car. That's the only way you're gonna make this go smooth and that's the only way you're gonna push innovation forward. If you just say, oh, we have to go gas and everyone's gonna go, okay, well, well, we have to go gas, so we're just gonna put whatever junk we can out there as opposed to being competitive and building something that's incredible, that's sought after, that you wanna drive, like the Model S Plaid, for example. It goes zero to 60 in two seconds or 2.1 or whatever. And that's something you're like, well, nothing else that I can afford can do that because I'd have to get a McLaren or a Lamborghini and that doesn't have four doors and I can't take my family on a road trip and I can't charge it and all that stuff. In the Plaid, that's incredible. And the Model 3, it was very inexpensive at first and then it has a charging network so you could use it as an everyday car and charge it at home. And that's where I like this F-150. It's quick, it has a ton of space. It has that huge storage space up front. That's the type of thing that needs to happen. And like I said earlier, Ford didn't do anything like, oh, you're gonna have a kitchen in the woods. No, it's just F-150 with battery. That's what they should have called it. F-150 with battery is what it should be called online. Because that's what it is. And the F-150 is the best selling truck in the world. And Ford knows how to make a truck. And they threw a battery in it and people were gonna buy them. And I like that approach. I like that a lot. Look at that Model Y. I just drove over top of a Model Y. He didn't even know. Probably because he was on autopilot or full self-driving. The other thing that needs to be explained about this car is the charging speed. Now, you can charge up to 150 kilowatts. The problem is the battery pack is a 98 kilowatt hour pack. So from 15 to 80%, you're looking at about 36 minutes and that's if you're at a DC fast charger. So this really is an around town vehicle. This is not for doing road trips. Yeah, you could do it. It would take a long time and then the reliability of the charging network is not good in the third party right now. So around town, you're gonna be great. You need your charger at home, you'll be fine. But uh, just something to note. And that's another thing like electric car owners, like it's very hard to find this information on Ford's site. But electric car owners understand this. They're a lot more savvy in understanding the charging speeds and knowing what that's going to mean and equate to in the real world. The other thing that's crazy is this has a 131 kilowatt hour extended range battery pack. That is such a massive pack, it's hard to even fathom. But yeah, that's what you have to have with all the drag that's being created off of the truck bed. You have to have a massive battery pack to get somewhat relevant range. But uh, just something I wanted to touch on. So what do I think about the F-150? Has a lot of space, drives nice. What happened here? Looks like a VW bug went off the road. I didn't know they were fast enough that you could lose control, but anything's possible nowadays. So I think Ford did a nice job here. I hope they continue to, instead of just trying to find quick fixes that they try to find solutions to problems and make the best electric car possible. But at the same time, I'm happy that they still offer uh, gas powered cars because uh, we're just not quite there yet. It's still the early stages of this. Everyone wants to rush to it and buy these cars that are just not ready for the masses and charging an insane amount of money for them. But in the case of the F-150 Lightning, I think if you can get it for MSRP or less, do not pay dealer markups. I think this is an, a nice truck and I think you're gonna really enjoy it, especially um, if you're hesitant coming into the electric car buying experience. Overall, this thing is uh, got a lot of space, fun performance. Let's just keep repeating ourselves. If you wanna see me review the uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E, click this video right here where I compare it to my Tesla Model Y. I think that'll be a nice video for you to watch next because you have nothing else going on today.